Dr. Tony Bartelsier with VIN and VIN Foundation. We're going to walk through a special case study on how you can make sense of the one-time forgiveness count adjustment that is available for those of you who have student loans, particularly federal student loans. This is a benefit that was announced in April of 2022. That's kind of a lesser known of the benefits that are available, uh, but is extremely beneficial, particularly for those of you that have been in repayment for a rather long time. So we have a, a case from a 1999 veterinarian who stands to benefit greatly from this one-time forgiveness count. We wanna use that to illustrate the concepts of this particular benefit. So you can walk through your own student loans and see if there's an opportunity for you to benefit as well. So taking this from the uh, VIN Foundation Student Debt Message Board area where we provide personalized assistance to make sense of your student loans, we have this 1999 DVM who with approximately $60,000 of student debt remaining. And she stands to save more than $65,000 in her remaining student loan repayment costs and finish student loan repayment much sooner than she's on track to do so now. You can read this case in detail if you'd like, if you've got a VIN username and password, uh, whether you're a VIN member or not a VIN member, um, we can help you get access to that uh, by setting up a VIN Foundation um, username and password using that link there you see on the VIN Foundation website. But basically, uh, what we do in the student debt message board area is a what I call a student loan physical exam. And based on what we find in that physical exam, we lay out some treatment options for borrowers to consider when it comes to their student loan repayment. So if we look at the information that we collect in order to walk through that student loan physical exam, it's what I call your, your student debt and income signalment. There's a link to it on this particular slide uh, where you can fill out that information so we can collect that minimum database, if you will, information we need uh, to help you walk through your student loan. So this person graduated in 1999. They have roughly $59,000 of student debt remaining. They've been in repayment for about 23 years. Uh, they're currently using a 30-year repayment plan with the minimum monthly payment of about $867 per month, and they have about seven years remaining on that repayment strategy. This particular veterinarian has an income of $65,000 a year. They are married. Uh, they filed their recent tax return jointly. Their spouse makes significantly more than them at $160,000 per year, and they have a family size of four. So that includes the borrower, the spouse, and two dependents that live in the house with them. In that student loan physical exam, what we're looking for is the loan types, interest rates, of course, the loan amount is important, the date that you receive those loans, as well as the loan servicer or servicers that you have remaining. All of that is going to be pertinent information in terms of what you should do next or if you have to do something next, like maybe consolidate. And in this particular case, this person has what are called older uh, federal Family Education Loans or FEL Program Loans, and they are in a privately held or commercially held category, meaning they're not automatically eligible for something like the one-time forgiveness count adjustment, but they can consolidate those remaining loans into a direct consolidation loan in order to be considered. And they, have, they would have to do that by May 1st of 2023 at the latest in order to be eligible for this one-time forgiveness count adjustment. Uh, but that still leaves a lot of time for you to work through this and decide whether or not a consolidation is the right move for you. So the first thing that we encourage folks to do is to obtain their federal student aid data file. And they can grab that at studentaid.gov, uh, looking for their student aid data file. And once they have that, they can upload it into the VIN Foundation My Student Loans tool. And if you have one of these privately held FEL program loans, we'll notify you when you upload that file, right? So we have some uh, programming in there to detect whether or not you have one or more of these types of privately held fail program loans because they are the ones that need to be consolidated in order to benefit from the one-time forgiveness count adjustment. After we get past that initial notification, we're going to confirm that uh, by going to the Loan Servicers tab. We can see here this is highlighted on the screen. Uh, the Loan Servicer name is listed there, and I know that this is not a uh, federally held loan versus a privately held loan because 
Department of Ed is not listed in the name. If you have a federally held loan, Department of Ed will be listed ahead of the loan servicer name. In this case, the ISLLC DBA, we would see a Department of Ed slash listed ahead of that loan servicer name. Because we don't, we know that this person does in fact have all remaining privately held fell program loans and it looks like there's three of those loans that make up that 59,073 of principal that is remaining. We can move our way through the tabs, the loan groups break down our loan history. We tend to group them based on whether they were direct loans or fell program loans, or if you have other student loans in there, we'll group them by that other category. But here we can see that this person ha had direct loans at one point in their loan history, but they have since all been consolidated into what's remaining, which is a, fell, uh, a series of fell consolidation loans. So if I look at the loan types, I can see that more closely. I see I have three remaining fell consolidated loans, and I can also see the dates at which those loans were made. And that's going to be important in determining how long this person's actually been in repayment or how much time they're likely to receive under the one-time forgiveness count adjustment. In essence, the one-time forgiveness count adjustment will give you forgiveness qualifying credit for any amount of time you've spent in repayment, including certain deferment and forbearance time as well, right? So with loans from 2000, it's likely that this person has been in repayment uh, for at least 23 years at this point, right? Or it will be in repayment for at least 23 years by the time the pandemic forbearance benefits and or the one-time forgiveness count adjustment is applied. So they have at least 23 years of qualifying forgiveness time once that count is applied. So that's our student loan physical exam. Um, from that, we're gonna develop a treatment plan, right? And because we've identified these privately held FEL program loans that need to be consolidated, and because we know this person has 23 years at least of qualifying repayment time, uh, we're going to want them to consolidate as fast as possible, right? Because as soon as they can get those loans into that direct consolidation category, the sooner that forgiveness count adjustment can apply, and they can also benefit from the remaining forbearance, uh, special pandemic forbearance time that will be in place through at least mid-2023, right? So there's that special pandemic forbearance time, there's no payment, no interest accruing, but we're still going to receive forgiveness qualifying credit for those periods of time. Right, so if we've been in repayment since about November 1999, uh, after this person graduated and their grace period expired uh, through at least June of 2023, that's 282 qualifying months. Now it's most likely that they're going to need 300 qualifying forgiveness months in order to reach forgiveness, right? So 282 already there, 300 is what's needed. So we have 18 months before we would reach forgiveness. So less than two years. In this particular case, based on the breakdown of the income of the veterinarian versus the income of the spouse and their remaining student loan balance, the most likely beneficial repayment strategy going forward is going to be income-based repayment, the older version, uh, and it, it's going to require them to file their taxes separately for 2022 and 2023 until they reach forgiveness. By doing that, this particular person could have a minimum monthly payment on their student loans of $292 per month once the pandemic forbearance benefits end and for the duration of that 18 months that's remaining before they reach forgiveness, right? So the 292, at least for the 2022 year, uh, and then that, peer, that payment will next be adjusted 12 months after that, depending on what their uh, 2023 income is. But we could see here that with 18 months remaining and a good chunk of that being uh, satisfied with a $292 uh, payment per month, they're likely to pay maybe $4,500 in total before they reach forgiveness versus you know, the uh, maybe $700 a month that they're paying under a standard 10 year or a, a 10 year remaining uh, time frame. Um, before they eliminate their student loan. So they can either choose to consolidate, file their taxes separately, use income-based for payment, and pay about $4,500 per month over the next two years, or they can continue on the 
current structure they're using and pay about $73,000 to extinguish that balance in about seven years, right? So kind of a no brainer there, right? I mean, which one would you choose? I, I think most people would choose the one that's significantly less, um, but in order for them to get there, they're gonna need to consolidate those loans as quickly as possible and then make sure that those loans are in something like income-based repayment or a forgiveness eligible plan for the duration of those 18 months needed to reach forgiveness. So that's an example of how we provide that assistance over on the uh, student debt message boards. We also just released this infographic and this is meant to walk through that same process. So um, if you don't want to post your case on the student debt message board area, you're certainly welcome to use all the free tools that are available on vinfoundation.org, including this new infographic. There's a link to it right here on this slide. And we're gonna, for the next couple of minutes here, just walk through what's on this uh, infographic that pertains to the one-time forgiveness count. So we we do a job. We we try to explain exactly what that is. Uh, essentially, the closer you are to 25 years of repayment time, regardless of the repayment plans that you've been using over the last 25 years, um, you can be eligible for this one-time forgiveness count adjustment. So particularly those veterinarians who graduated more than 15 years or so ago, you really want to dive in and, and do a good physical exam of your student loans to see if you can benefit like the case that we just went through. There is some language out there. People are often confused by the, you know, do I get forgiveness at 20 or 25 years? Most of that is gonna be determined by whether or not you have graduate school loans or not. And everybody that went to veterinary school and used student loans have graduate school student loans. So most likely they're gonna fall into that 25 year forgiveness uh, bucket. But who knows, maybe we'll find out that some of you may get 20 year forgiveness that's just an added bonus. But in most cases, even if it's at 25 years, many of you are still going to significantly benefit from this one-time forgiveness count adjustment. So we wanna look and see, do you have federal student loans? What type of federal student loans do you have? That's most easily going to be done by visiting studentaid.gov, looking in your dashboard for that student aid data file Right, so we're gonna look for that download my A data link. It'll generate this ugly TXT or text file. You wanna save that to your computer and then upload it into the VIN Foundation My Student Loans tool. That's where you'll get that alert telling you whether or not you need to consolidate if you have any or all of those uh, privately held fell program loans remaining because that one-time forgiveness count is only eligible to federally held student loans. Right? Direct loans are always federally held student loans, fell program loans, Perkins loans, health profession student loans, loans for disadvantaged students. There's a really good chance that those are not federally held student loans, but you can take those loans and consolidate them into a direct consolidation loan and and if you do that before May 1st of 2023, then you can be considered for this one-time forgiveness count adjustment. So if you have all remaining fells, you're gonna to wanna to consolidate in most cases as fast as you possibly can. You can consolidate previously consolidated loans. That's a question that comes up frequently, just like in the case that we illustrated, they had all remaining uh, fell consolidated loans, those can still be consolidated again into a direct consolidation loan, which would make them eligible for the one-time forgiveness count adjustment. Your interest rate in most cases is going to stay the same. It may even go down. Now, some of you with fell program loans have some um, inherent interest rate discounts. You may lose those. Right, so it really depends. We've heard some reports from some veterinarians who have been consolidating their loans and they're still preserving those interest rate discounts. Technically speaking, you're not supposed to preserve those interest rate discounts, but that's still not a reason not to consolidate, right? So even if your interest rate goes up a little bit, run the numbers, see if there's a dramatic difference like we illustrated in this particular case, where even if their interest rate went up by one and a half percentage points, it would still more than makes sense to consolidate and work towards forgiveness rather than continue on uh, the current path that they were on. You're gonna to wanna to choose a forgiveness eligible repayment plan uh, once that one-time forgiveness count adjustment is applied and when you know how many qualifying forgiveness months you have, it'll be a little bit easier to know exactly which plan to choose. But in general, the forgiveness eligible plans are going to be income contingent repayment, income-based repayment, 
pay as you earn if you're eligible, revised pay as you earn, or even a 10-year fixed repayment plan is eligible for the uh, for forgiveness qualifying credit. If you do need help with any of this, come on over to the VIN Foundation Veterinary Student Loan Debt Help page. We'll walk you through how exactly to get help. We even have a link to the student debt and income signalment form there um, and how to create a username and password if you need access to that special student debt message board area that we, that we use to provide this assistance. So hopefully that helps to illustrate how this all works. If you, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, we're, we're here to help. Thank you.